Hello you three, welcome to story time. So we ran out of videos from Tom Fletcher, so you're back with me again and we are gonna be reading The Creakers. So we're up to chapter three. What's just happened is they found the note from the parents saying we've gone forever. Sorry, have fun. Don't worry about cleaning up after yourself. So the kids are really happy and let's see what happens. Chapter three, helpful. Lucy went home and did her homework. Oh, Lucy, you're such a boring snorebag. No, I'm not, said Lucy. Yes, you are. These people didn't buy this book to read about you doing your homework. This book is all about how you save the town. Is it? Lucy asked. Yes, now put that homework down and go and get on with it. Lucy put her homework down and went and got on with it. First, she changed out of her school uniform and got into her favourite denim dungarees. Well, if I'm not going to school, I might as well be comfortable, she said to herself, clipping up the buttons and suddenly feeling nice and comfy and ready to get stuff done. Funny how dungarees do that. That's better, she said, licking her head and slicking her fringe o licking her hand and slicking her fringe over to one side. Just as she did this, crash! Lucy went outside to see a car sticking out of her mum's neat hedge in the front garden. Steam and smoke were hissing out of the engine and she could hear laughter and giggles coming from inside. What the chickens? Lucy cried as the driver's door swung open and she saw the person behind the wheel. Actually, it was two people. Two young boys from her school. They were brothers and always getting into trouble. Buzz! Buddy! Lucy cried. What on earth are you doing? Crashing into a hedge by the looks of things. Buzz was sitting at the steering wheel, barely able to see out of the window, while Buddy was crouched on the floor, operating the pedals. Just going for a spin, Buzz explained. But you're a little boy, you can't drive. Buddy called out from under the steering wheel. Why have we stopped? I think we're out of petrol, Buzz replied. You've stopped because you've crashed, you nitwit, and you're lucky you didn't hurt anyone or yourselves. Lucy cried. Now! Get out of that car or I'm going to tell. She paused. The boys looked up at her. Who? Asked Buzz. And the boys smiled with the cheeky smile people use when they know they can get away with something. Oh, said Lucy, suddenly realising that there was absolutely nobody she could tell. Nobody stopped these boys doing whatever they wanted. She was on her own. Well, children can't drive around in cars. It's silly and dangerous said Lucy, and she reached into the car, threw the open door, switched off the engine and took away the keys. Oi, those are our dad's keys, Buzz said. You can't take those, it's stealing. Exactly. They're your dad's keys for your dad's car. What would he say if he saw you both now? Lucy said. Yeah, but he can't see us, can he? replied Buzz. But he will when he comes back, unless you think your dad is never coming back. Do you? Lucy said. Buzz's face changed suddenly. Of course he's coming back, Buddy insisted. Good. And when he does, you can tell him to come and pick his keys up from me. Until then, I'll look after them. And with that, Lucy popped the keys in the pocket of her dungarees. She was just about to head back inside when she heard someone calling her name from further up the street. Lucy! Lucy! I need your help! Lucy followed the faint cries to Ella's front door and walked inside. Ella had got herself wedged inside the washing machine while playing hide and seek. To be fair, she hadn't been found for three hours and by that point no one else was playing the game so technically she'd won. Yes, I'm the best! Ella cheered as Lucy carefully removed the door with a screwdriver like she'd seen her dad do once. Ella was free to continue annoying her friends. Right, now, time for a sandwich, Lucy said to herself, rubbing her hungry tummy. But... Lucy, help! Another voice called out. Lucy sighed and quickly headed in the direction of the child in need. By the time she'd helped that one, there was another, then another, followed by even more. There's Ella stuck in the washing machine. On that day, the day it all began, 12 separate kids got their hands stuck in biscuit jars, seven got Play-Doh wedged up their nostrils, one managed to paint herself purple, 
even in her belly button, and every single child wanted Lucy to help them out. Oh dear. Lucy's afternoon continued like this until long after the sun had set. She ended up helping half the population of Whiffington, and by the end of that day, you wouldn't believe the state of the town itself. What do you mean you would? Okay, check this out. The houses were so messy, they looked like they'd been decorated for Halloween. Blue paper hung from the branches of every tree, windows were flung wide open, and sofas had been shoved out in front gardens with children jumping on them with their shoes on. One house had the entire contents of its living room spread out on the roof, and another had the entire roof in the living room. It was as though all of Whiffington had turned completely topsy-turvy. The grown-ups hadn't even been gone for 24 hours yet, and already the town looked like a scene from a disaster movie. As she walked home that evening, Lucy helped anyone who needed it and picked up as much rubbish as she could, dumping it in the back of her dad's truck. Being responsible had become part of who Lucy was, especially since her dad left. She'd seen how tough it was for her mum and she'd had to grow up pretty quickly. So while all the other kids spent their first grown-up free nights causing mayhem and getting up to mischief, staying up late, eating ice cream for dinner and pizza burgers for pudding, Pizza burgers are burgers stuffed inside two slices of pizza instead of burger buns. They're amazing. You should try them if your parents ever go missing. Lucy was getting herself ready for bed. She was the only child in Whiffington to brush her teeth that night. She was also the only child in Whiffington to wash the dishes, take the bins out, put on her pyjamas, read herself a bedtime story and turn out the light. Just as she was getting all cosy on her pillow, a great racket broke the silence. Uh... Lucy, can we have our dad's car keys back, please? Called up Buzz from outside. His voice was loud and echoey, and when Lucy peered out of the window, she saw that he was using a megaphone. We promise we won't drive it! But I thought you said we were going to break the land speed record! Whispered Buddy, his voice amplified by the megaphone. Shh! hissed Buzz. Lucy stepped downstairs, stuck her hand out of the front door and quickly took the megaphone from the noisy boys. She took it into a safe hiding place along with their father's car keys inside the fridge. All was quiet and Lucy was exhausted. She walked back up the stairs to her bedroom and climbed un under the covers. <sighs> Peace at last, she sighed. What Lucy didn't realise was that even though her mum and dad weren't there, she wasn't alone. There was someone else in Lucy's house. There was something else. In Lucy's house, something hiding under Lucy's bed, waiting for her to fall asleep, just like it did every night. Okay, so things are about to get a little scary. Don't say I didn't warn you. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 